Hi, this is Stonely, and this is the second version of my root template for creating a, your own faction. The basic idea is that you get provided this file, which looks really ugly upon starting. <laughs> uh, you have quick and easy ways to edit it and shape it into the faction you want. Uh, before we get started, make sure that under View and Studio, you have Assets enabled, you have Swatches enabled, and you have Symbols enabled. You also maybe want to enable constraints, but that's not really necessary. However, if you want to dive deeper into what Affinity Designer does and how it works, I would recommend constraints as well. For my personal workspace, I have Symbols on Assets on a second screen. Um, for this tutorial, of course, I'll keep it here. And I have swatches, constraints, and color up here, while I have my layers down here. Alright, so let's start with assets. Assets are an easy way to bring elements or pre made elements into your scene. To import the assets provided in the video description, go to your assets panel, click these three stripes here say input assets and then just choose your asset file and you'll be able to select it here. Now these, this asset file comes with a lot of icons and stuff taken from the maps and faction boards. There's also other files that I'll link or provide uh, with some extra assets and all you're really gonna do with those is you just drag and drop them in here and you have the element in the scene and you can use it however you want. Now be advised that these elements are made by ladder games and therefore not for commercial use, right? Don't use them in any commercial way, this is just for fan projects and if they ever ask you to take it down you gotta have to do it. Anyway, um, you can add to your assets, you can make cat subcategories and add new things to this. If we just make an example here, I have this box and I'm so proud of it that I want to save it for future projects. And I'll just go here and say add from selection and suddenly my faction board resources thing has this rectangle in it. And it's even called rectangle because that's the name of my layer. Yeah, so um, I really don't want that so I'm gonna delete it. But that's basically how assets work. Now, tied together with symbols and swatches later on, we're gonna have some really nice tools that I'll show you right now. Um, maybe I'll use this segue to go into swatches right now. So, what are swatches? Well, swatches are really just a palette that allows you to quickly apply colors to your elements. But we can go beyond that. However, let's just check out basic functionality first. If we have the color swatches open and I have the fill selector right now, I can simply pick a color from here. It's way easier than using a color wheel, but also less accurate. But it allows you to get the basic colors in. However, the real magic of swatches is the global uh, swatches. A global swatch is linked among all objects that use it. Now if we go zoom back up, if I change this swatches, this global swatch, uh, you can see it's global because it has this white corner. If I right click it and say edit fill and I just drag this around, you can see that all the elements that are linked to this color are actually changing the color to this new fill. Now if I want to link an element to a global color, I just select it. I want to change the fill for example. And then I just click on faction color and it applies the faction color to it. Because this is a global swatch, this element is now linked the same way as the other things are. So if I change this back to a pinkish color, you'll see that it also gets the change. If you want to add new global colors, for example if I want to have this green border, as a new global one, I'll just select the thing that has the color uh, and I'll click this button here. 
Now I have a new global color swatch. I can rename it if I want to. Let's make this a border color. It really doesn't matter what you name it. And also, I have to click it one more time with the border selected to link the border color from this element to the new swatch because the, when I create it, it's not automatically linked. Yeah, so that's how you create global swatches and how to use global swatches. And that's really all there is to it. For now, I'll just delete this one again. So I'm working with the same ideas or the same template as you are working with. All right, so let's go into symbols. Uh, for that, I change to my symbols tab, wherever you have it. Uh, for now, I want to make sure that the sync button is indeed pressed. And the background, for example, is a symbol. Any change I make to the background also applies to all other instances of the background. So whatever I add, change or transform in here will apply to all other background elements or other background symbols. This is of course only true when the sync is activated. Another example for symbols is the reward symbol I have here. This is made for quick prototyping. All of these things are um, reward swatches, uh, reward <laughs> symbols, excuse me. And when I disable in one of them the placeholder, it will hide it in every instance. Now, there's a reason the placeholder is here and it is visible. So let's just work with the symbol real quick. I have all these symbols set up. Let's say I have a new token I want to add. It doesn't show up for some reason. Oh yeah, right, because it's not in the box. Let's just place that in my faction board, not linked to any of the um, any of the other things. Now, what I work with when I work with tokens, for example, uh, these tokens are 100%, but the box surrounding them is set to 50%. So to do that, you can simply select the layer and press 50, but that would apply to all the other symbols, so we don't want that. Usually you nest it, and then you, in a group, right? And then you make the group a little bit more transparent, and then that's the way how you achieve um, the slightly different color. For now, let's just leave it like that, and drag the reward thing over it. Now the reward is mm, exactly sized with the placeholder to have the same size as the token and that's the way it snaps to it if snapping is enabled up here. So I just have to line this up. I can see this red and green border and that's the way I know it's snapped. So now I want to define a reward that's given to the player playing this faction uh, when he's using this particular token. To do that, let's just disable the placeholder for now. Now I want to deactivate my sync. And, and I have to choose, do I want to have a reward that's every turn or a reward that's instant? So I want to go for an instant reward. And I don't want to have a card draw or a card draw and VP. I just want to have a victory points. So I'll enable this layer, open it, and instead of a variable amount of VP, I want to have plus something VP. So enable that. And let's just say I want to have two VP. So there you go. You now have a token with a reward layer of it that is plus two victory points. Now I can group them again. Uh, either pressing CTRL and T or by going to layer and group. Now these two are grouped together and I can move them as one. Again, if you want to do this as they do it in the original faction boards, the token actually needs to be on about 50% opacity. Another symbol in this project is this bar showing high, medium, and low complexity, or card wealth, or whatever. Uh, same rules apply here. With sync disabled, I can just 
disable and enable what I need and that way I can set up uh, the backside of this board rather easily. All these things are also linked so whenever you create a new token or a new building just make sure to either change these symbols or create a new one. So that's pretty much what symbols are and how they work. Um, what you can also do and what I did, as you might have noticed, is to link those symbols to my faction color. Of course, that's usually the way it goes. So this curve, um, or rather, yeah, this curve, which is my building, is linked to this faction color with its fill. Now, usually you can see that, but it's a little bit buggy right now. So if I click on this with fill selected, you can see there's a white border around faction color in my swatches panel. That means it's linked to this color. And if I change that, for example, to text color, you will hopefully... Oh, wait, let's redo that. Uh, undo that. If I have sync enabled, then I'll link it. Then you'll see it, up, it will update in the symbols panel as well as in all other instances, as we expect. So let's redo that and reset my view. And let's go into the rectangle tool I have. The rectangle is a bit complicated to use. Uh, first off, this is a compound. A compound means I have one basic shape and I can add, subtract or mix and match those other shapes into it. For example, you will see that this little cut here is really just a separate element that's subtracting from the original rectangle. These little elements are anchored by constraints. So if I look at my constraints panel, you can see this one in particular is linked to the bottom and to the right and does not resize. Now this is not as important if you don't want to uh, go into that. Now there's a problem with compounds. If you copy-paste them, they really end up messy and you get something like this, at least if they're more complex. So to circumvent this little bug in the program, what you can do is you just you know, create the shape you want, let's say I want a box in this size, then I convert it to curves up here, and now I copy this one and I redo, uh, excuse me, I undo all the transformations I did. So I have it back in its original place and I just simply paste what I copied. So now I have a curves version of what I did before and still maintain the template for new boxes to create. The last thing to show you is probably how to export everything. Once you're done, or you have a working prototype, you want to switch to the export persona. Now, I deleted all the slices for this demo to show you how to create your own. You have slices, which are elements that will be exported as single images. And you have your layers, let's move to adjust your layers. Now, if you want to create new perfect slices of this, just select them, hold down shift, and select the other one. I want to make a slice for each of these. So now I create slices by clicking this button. You can see they automatically have been perfectly fit to the dimensions of each element. And I can export single elements by clicking this button next to it. Or I can export all of them into a folder of my choosing by clicking export slices. And it will also show me what slices are getting exported. Now if you're unhappy with the format that get exported, you can change for each slice the options, the export options, for example PNG is the standard. You can even add multiple different PNG versions, like if you want to have a bigger version or for whatever reason a different pixel value, you can all set that here, as well as entirely different formats, for example a GIF for whatever reason. But I guess usually the standard way it's set up should do it for you. And yeah, that will export your faction the way you want it. Well, that's not every little detail in this faction board template, but I guess we went over the most important bits. The video has been long enough already, and 
I hope you liked it. If you have suggestions, leave them in the comments or contact me on the Woodland Warriors Discord server where I usually hang out. But if I don't see your post, feel free to ping me or private message me on there. Yeah, so thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.